By now, we all understand that a short runner intake makes power at high RPM, and a long runner intake makes power at low RPM. The question is, does that change when we change the displacement? In this video, we're going to compare a long runner and a short runner intake. Not only that, we're going to do it on two displacements, a 6.2 liter and a 416 stroker. So we'll compare an Edelbrock Super Victor short runner intake to the factory LS3 long runner intake. We'll compare that on an LS3 crate motor with a camshaft and a 416 stroker with even more camshaft. So which one wins? But make sure to stick around. At the end, I'm also going to throw in a bonus test. We'll compare the short runner Super Victor to an equally short runner High Ram. So who wins that one? Here's how we got things started. We installed our GM LS3 crate motor from the guys over at Gander Chevrolet up on the dyno. Now, the only modifications we made to this are we put valve springs in it so we could run our camshaft. The camshaft that we ran in this crate motor was a 54-469-11 comp cam. I'll go ahead and put the specs up here. Uh, it's a healthy cam and it's um, getting up near the edge of available piston to valve clearance on a factory combination with the big valve and the flat top piston. So, but it's a good cam, works well, obviously helps this thing make good power. The heads had been recently given a valve job, uh, nothing elaborate, just a typical three angle valve job because we'd run the heck out of this motor. This thing had a lot of laps on it. So we just want to freshen up the, the cylinder head, but nothing was done to the bottom end. We put it all back together and ran it. And with that cam and inch and seven eighths hooker headers, we used the Holly HP management system to dial all this stuff in to make sure we maximize the power output of each combination and equipped with a factory LS3 intake and a 92 millimeter throttle body. Our LS3 crate motor produced with a cam, produced 581 horsepower and 527 foot pounds of torque. So it did pretty well. This is a good combination. Um, these LS3 motors, they've got plenty of head flow. You stick a cam in them, they look pretty good. So now let's take a look and see what happened when we installed the Super Victor intake and we'll watch that baby run and see how it does. After running our canned 6.2 liter LS3 crate motor with the factory uh, LS3 intake manifold, it produced 581 horsepower and 528 foot-pounds of torque, so it did well. Then we installed the Edelbrock Super Victor. Now the Super Victor was set up for EFI, so it had port injection, had X for, uh, for all of the throt or the all of the injectors. It also had a 4500 uh, dominator size carburetor flange on it, which we installed a 4500 four hole AccuFab throttle body, so more than enough airflow for the kind of power level that we were talking about. So here's what happened when we installed the Edelbrock Super Victor with the 4500 flange on it. Obviously picked up a lot of peak power. Peak power was all the way up to 614 horsepower. Peak torque dropped down to 504 foot-pounds of torque. And as you can see from the curve, the long runner set, uh, LS3 intake basically made more power all the way up to 6,000 RPM. And they made the same at 6,100. 6, but everywhere below that, the long runner manifold offered up quite a bit more torque. Here at 4,500, we're looking at 474 versus 521. So it's a pretty big gain, pretty big difference. So for anything, any kind of 6,500 RPM, like a cammed LS3, you basically want the factory LS3 intake. Now, if you're gonna run this thing from 6,000 to 7,500 or 6,000 to 8,000, then short runner stuff probably is the way to go. So this is the difference in power. 
This is kind of typical of the short runner stuff. It tends to make more peak power and lose stuff down low. And that's on a 6.2 liter. So what happens if we run the same test now on the larger 416 stroker? Let's find out. In this test, we ran the same LS3 uh, factory LS3 intake manifold, 92 millimeter throttle body on a larger 416 stroker. Our 416 was built from a factory LS3 block from Gander Chevrolet. We installed a K1 four inch stroker crank and matching 6125 rods, along with a set of Weisco flat top pistons. We also had a set of Airflow Research LS3 heads which offered more than enough flow for what we were trying to do. And then a Brian Tooley Racing Stage 4 cam. Now that cam was a 623-596 lift split, a 247-258 degree duration split, and a 113 degree lobe separation angle. The combination also featured the same long tube engine 7 8 headers that we ran on the 6.2 liter and the Holly EFI system used to dial everything in. So equipped like that, our 416 and the factory LS3 manifold produced 627 horsepower and 568 foot-pounds of torque. So here's what happened after we installed the Edelbrock Super Victor intake. And remember, this Super Victor intake was the 4500 flange version because they have 4150 flange versions also. It was set up for port injection, but we actually ran this and most of these intakes other than the factory LS3 with a carburetor on this 416 because we were testing carbureted intakes. So rather than running it as a port injected deal, we ran it with a 1050 dominator. And the only difference is the intake acts the same. It's just that the carburetor tends to add some charge cooling from the fuel. And so it makes a little bit more power usually than the EFI version. But the intake acts the same as I said. So equipped with the Edelbrock Super Victor, this thing made 669 horsepower and 563 foot-pounds of torque and as we saw before the long runner intake makes more power down low in this case down below 4500 and the single plane makes it more power from 6000 on up the interesting thing though is the area in the middle on the 6.2 liter the long runner manifold offered a lot more power in that range it offered quite a bit more power until the crossover point but on this larger displacement motor the single plane even though it's making slightly less than the long runner intake is in this area from 46 or 4700 on out to 5700 let's say and certainly on out to the crossover point 57 or 5800 it's down a little bit but not by a lot so if you were to run this motor say from 5000 to 7000 and you were shifting at 7000 and having it drop back down to 5000 the single plane would definitely make a lot more power and accelerate a lot harder than the long runner manifold does so on the 416, the short runner manifold, if you're going to run it in that kind of range, looks like it's a better combination. So even though the crossover point was lower, it was at 5800 on this combination and 6100 on the smaller combination, even though that's not a big change, uh, there was a pretty sizable change in the difference between the two in the usable range where you would be accelerating and running this motor. So now let's take a look at our bonus test where we compare the Super Victor to the Holly High Ram, which both are kind of high RPM intakes, so it should be interesting. This is our final test. This is our bonus test. We're comparing the Holly High Ram to the Edelbrock Super Victor 4500. And this test was run on our canned 6.2 liter LS3 crate motor, equipped with our Holly, our, I mean, equipped with our Edelbrock Super Victor intake. And then remember, this one was fuel injected, not carbureted like we ran on the big motor. It was run with EFI and a 4500 four hole AccuFab throttle body. So equipped with the Super Victor intake, it made 614 horsepower and 504 foot-pounds of torque. 
So here's what happened after we installed the Holly High Ram. Go down to our High Ram. You can see the Holly High Ram actually made a little bit more power. Now the High Ram was configured with a dual four barrel top and we ran two 4150 throttle bodies on it, but there really is an advantage in airflow because the, the single 4500 Dominator style throttle body that Acufab sells is probably twice as much as it needs to be to support the 600 and I think the Holly made 619 or 620 horsepower and the Super Victor made 614 so the 4500 would easily flow enough to support that as a matter of fact it'll flow enough to support a hundred more than that so that's not a problem this isn't an airflow thing this is actually an intake design and the biggest difference between these manifolds is not really in how much they flow it's the runner design so on the high ram it's more of a tunnel ram style manifold but it has eight uh, equal length and equal shape runners the single plane, the Super Victor, because of the design, because of how it has to fit in the packaging, has four long outer runners and four shorter center runners. So those runners are actually designed to be optimized for power production at different RPM. So you get kind of a dual torque peak with a single plane. You don't get that with a Holley. And obviously on this application with this cam and this combination, um, the Holley kind of picked up power through most of the curve from 4,500 on out to 7,000. So if you were to run it in that RPM range, the high ram would um, kind of be the way to go on this combination. So there you have it. There's our bonus test. It worked out really well. The high ram did good. Let's get to our conclusion. Okay, guys, what did you think? What did you think about our comparison between the long runner factory intake and the short runner super victory intake on the two different displacements? Any surprises? Well, the long runner stuff always makes better power down low. The short runner always makes better power at top. But the interesting thing for me is that the crossover point between those two, when we went from the 6.2 liter up to the 416, didn't change dramatically. So we had to take a closer look. And taking a closer look at the 416, the single plane was actually maybe better suited for that larger displacement. I mean, sure, the crossover point didn't change dramatically, but if you look at the gains, the torque gains offered by the longer runner intake, they weren't as dramatic on the larger displacement. So on a larger displacement motor, a single plane short runner intake maybe is, can be a better choice, although there's always gonna be trade-off as we saw. Now, what about the difference between the high ram and the Super Victor? Again, it's a change in runner length. And also, here's something to think about. The difference between your typical single plane intake and a high ram is this. A single plane has four long runners and four short runners. So those are mismatched. Those are optimized for different RPM. On the high ram, it has four or eight equal length runners. So they're all tuned for the same RPM. That's why we see the big shift in power production between those two intakes. I'm Richard Holdner, guys. Thanks for watching. Make sure to like, share, subscribe, and ring the bell. Thanks for all your help with making the channel a success. See you next time.